Hey guys, how is the going? I hope you guys are doing well. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Film Life Vlog. I have uh, something really cool to show you today. I just came from my Goodwill store, uh, a local Goodwill store, my favorite uh, thrift store around here. And I came back with a really nice uh, package. And as you can see, it's the Minota Maxim uh, bag here. So when I saw it, it really piqued my um, curiosity. And uh, I was excited. The guy there told me that it was uh, he would give it to me for eight dollars. Everything in that bag. So usually I go and I collect these boxes, right, that they keep for me. Uh, but this time they only had one camera in one bag. So I was curious. Eight dollars. I opened it up, and sure enough, I was actually quite happy with what I saw. So I decided to take the deal. So what this bag came with was this main camera here and this is the Minota uh, Maxim 7000 uh, film camera. I did a little bit of research on this camera and I found out that uh, this camera was made in 1985. Um, apparently it was uh, one of the first of its kind um, that could do autofocus um, so I'm actually quite uh, happy to own this now. And it, it also came with a bunch of other accessories that I'm going to go through with you. Um, it came with this uh, flash unit. And this flash unit is the Minota Maxim 2800 AF flash unit. It came in this uh, case here. So this camera bag also came with uh, an extra lens here. And this lens is the Minota uh, 50mm 1.7 f 1.7 lens. It's a beautiful lens. Look at that. Uh, gosh, this, this lens is quite beautiful, I must say. I, I just like the way it looks. And uh, it's quite impressive. And as you can see, it has these indicators on it. Um, and it's an automatic lens. This lens on the camera currently is also the, let me see, this is a zoom lens. Yeah, so this is the AF 28 to 85 right there. And uh, it came with a lens hood on it, which is quite compact, I must say. I really like that. This camera reminds me of, uh, it's almost like an 80s a stereo player. This is the first camera I have that has buttons that look like that. Look at it. It's quite retro. It's quite 80s as you can tell. The 80s design. It just oozes 80s design. Um, I particularly like the bottom of this camera. Look how clean that bottom is. It's almost like this guy never took off uh, the uh, this uh, plastic that protects the bottom. He never. It never came off. So Physically, at, at least from the outside, I can tell that this camera is in extremely good shape. Um, the only thing that I've noticed is the LCD internally looks like there's a there's a crack in there, so the ink is uh, is bled onto uh, the screen a bit. But I have a feeling that this will still work. Uh, if you know anything about LCD screens, like watches. Sometimes when they crack, they still work. So I'm optimistic that this will work. Uh, it came with film in it. Look at it. There's actually some film already loaded in it. So this is a good sign. Uh, could mean that um, the owner, the previous owner, um, uh, was shooting with it and then stopped. Which brings me to the point, uh, talking about the owner. I've actually been thinking about it lately. Um, there was uh, recently I bought a I bought a camera uh, from um, actually it was a projector. No, I bought a projector from someone, and he was telling me that it was it belonged to his his father-in-law uh, who had just passed, and it just really uh, I was sad to hear that, but now I own that projector, right, and. I was actually thinking about it. It was a 16 millimeter uh, projector, and it's just really 
got it, it really got me thinking because I have a lot of cameras that used to belong to people that were enthusiastic about their cameras just like I am maybe even more than I am um, a lot of them lived a lot of them I've seen uh, so much through the eyes through the lenses of these cameras and now I own these cameras and every time I, I look at these cameras, I almost feel that is my tribute to their lives. Uh, for those that don't uh, are not, no longer alive, um, the fact that I keep them well and I actually am preserving them for my children as well and for those that will come after me, um, there is that connection that I feel. So when I'm collecting these cameras, um, I, it's almost like I'm treating this, these cameras with the respect that they deserve. Um, I look at it one way as salvaging these cameras because other than that, they will just go into some heap somewhere and um, film cameras were so um, demonized back in uh, recently. Uh, now things are changing. But with the digital revolution, film cameras were so demonized, nobody wanted film cameras until recently. Now, it seems that people are starting to catch on to this whole film uh, photography movement. Um, so me collecting these cameras is, is, I feel a lot of connection to the previous owners. I mean, think about it. Um, this camera here uh, used to be owned by somebody. Um, I hope the person is still alive. I could see that the person had a, there was an address on this bag um, and actually a phone number on the bag as well. Usually uh, what happens with these cameras is uh, the person passes on and the family who are no longer interested in this stuff they think it's junk and they just take it to the Goodwill store. Um, you know and it makes me think about my own life and the fact that right now I'm living, I'm living and I'm enjoying these cameras and I'm really having the best of times with these cameras and uh, one day it's, it's going to be over and um, I'm actually thinking about that and also thinking about the legacy that I leave behind. Uh, so anyways, just the bottom line is I when I collect these cameras, I treat them with a lot of respect because I know these cameras have a lot of history. They're almost historical artifacts, you know, they meant so much to people. Photography means a lot to people and uh, more, more especially the cameras, the tools that these photographers use uh, mean a lot to them. So. Uh, me uh, having these cameras and cleaning them up and storing them in a nice place and treating them with a lot of love is just my tribute uh, to those that had it before me. So I could tell that this person who owned this camera was actually a photographer or at least a serious photographer because this also came with uh, these um, filters here that you could use. Uh, for the camera and for a lot of times you could use these for black and white photography to actually boost the contra uh, uh, contrast and it came with this holder here the filter uh, holder uh, so this part screws to the front of your lens and then you would slip your filters in here just like that okay so I could tell that this person was a serious uh, photographer and um, and also I could tell that this was this camera likely uh, was with only one owner because this bag um, uh, is an original bag as you can tell us it's, it's an original bag um, the camera seems to be in a really good shape and also I'm gonna blot out the name and the phone number but it also came with this tag here um, it has the name of the person and also um, the phone number of the person as well. The, and, um, that's actually qu quite interesting. It came with a box, an extra box of optical filter here. Um, there was another one here. 
another filter box here and also um, a bunch of manuals it came with a bunch of manuals as well this one here I believe this would be the uh, manual for the lens and this one here is a certificate that it came with it came with this brochure it's quite interesting it's like a traveling back in time just looking at these um, so this is like some uh, it gives you some of the specs right the chart gives you some easy specs it came with uh, this bigger manual here which would be I believe this is the camera the camera manual uh, there's also an owner's uh, manual as well one thing that this came with which I'm really really fascinated and grateful for is this little chart here and this chart is actually quite powerful it's a very very useful chart I think every film photographer or any photographer for that matter needs to have this with them um, just take a look at this so this chart is the trial exposure for different picture situations it gives you different film speeds uh, over here and it ranges from uh, the ESA is pretty much identical to the ISO so it ranges from uh, 25 to about 500 speed film over here and it tells you the different conditions um, that you'll be shooting with and uh, and it goes into more detail than I've ever seen on these online charts if you can see it has a uh, snow desert beach uh, normal daylight light overcast sky uh, dark over overcast sky sunrise sunset twilight uh, interior average bright interior school auditorium bright lit street scene flood lighted buildings at night outdoor sports events um, black and white color TV who would ever shoot that I don't know but yes people do lightning units of fireworks it even tells you some tips on shooting fireworks and landscapes by moonlight Ooh, that is awesome because I need that those uh, specs small town at night from a distance I mean that is amazing that is amazing and what it gives you it's combinations of uh, the shutter speed and the aperture setting that you need to use uh, when you're going when you have those different uh, situations so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to scan this and I will uh, as a bonus to you guys I will actually leave a link in the description of this video uh, you can click on this link it will be on a Google Drive and you can actually download this and you can print it and you can uh, use it for your own photography and this is my little gift to you guys I think this will come in very handy so anyways um, that said this model here is the uh, 7000 that I talked about and I actually have another Minota of a similar model. Uh, this one here is the 4000 um, SI model. And this is, uh, this is a much lighter model. This looks to be a more modern uh, version of it. Maybe a, a, a more uh, consumer friendly model. This one looks to be a bit more professional. Um, it's probably um, geared for uh, at least semi pros to pros because you can just tell from the camera the features on the camera itself and this one would be for um, your typical everybody anyone can use this camera so it's a bit more lighter uh, it's got the built-in flash which most of the professional cameras actually don't have that um, it's got those nice easy to use uh, settings here which is great um, so anyways so that said guess what I have not even tested this camera to me to make sure that this will work I actually do not know if this will work but I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope that this camera actually works so here is the proof of the pudding 
um, to see if this camera will actually work so it came with these batteries but I have a feeling that these batteries are dead because it they don't turn on one thing that makes me worried obviously is the fact that this LCD screen is a bit uh, cracked um, so and it's bleeding in there I'm hoping that this camera did not fall and get damaged maybe that's why there's a film in it that does not uh, why did the photographer not finish um, his last row and there's still film in there did the camera get damaged and could not work anymore so I don't know but I'm hopeful that this camera will actually work so I'm gonna uh, spin this camera around and I'm gonna try and put new batteries in this camera and we'll see if it works it's actually quite easy to take this off you basically unscrew this part and just pull this out like that um, it came with these batteries in there uh, but I have a feeling that they were not uh, they were all dead so what I'm gonna do it, it actually moves a bit see this little movement here and that's actually quite nice so I'm gonna take out these old batteries it takes uh, triple A batteries so these are the old batteries I'll recycle them appropriately and I have some new triple A batteries here so I'm gonna start with Because of this camera is so good, it's such a heavy duty camera, I really want it to work. I'm really rooting for it to work. I mean, it only cost me $8 for all of this stuff, um, but um, I do hope that it works. And the other thing I wanted to mention also is the fact that um, my collection, as you guys know, I don't own, I not only shoot film but I also collect film cameras and my co collection the majority of them I have gotten them this way I basically get the cameras cheap and oh look at that the moment I inserted the battery look it turned on those old batteries weren't working before Oh, this is a good sign. It says program. That is a very good sign, guys. Oh, I hope this thing works. It's now in the lock position here. So I'm going to turn this on. And I'll see. Wow. Wow. It says uh, it's still indicating that it's a position zero, I guess, because it it feels that there's no film in there because the batteries died it's been quite a while since this was loaded now uh oh oh look <laughs> look the the I can see the shutter speed and the aperture setting are all automatic in auto mode right now so what I'm gonna do this camera has so this camera here, over here, you can see this little button here. That's the autofocus and the manual position. Right now it's in manual. I'm going to put this on autofocus. And I'm going to try and take a, t a, a trial photo to see if this actually works. So I'm going to see if this works. Okay, let's see if this works. It says shutter speed of 180, aperture 4.5. Let's see if this actually will take it. It did. I'm going to try and play around with this a bit more. And um, at a later date, I'll also do an exposition just on this camera. But until then, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please do click the like button. And um, if you have not already subscribed to this channel, please click the subscribe button. And uh, don't forget the little uh, gift that I have for you in the description of this video uh, it's a really helpful guide click on it download it and print it and use it 
for your purposes. Okay guys, until the next time, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and stay safe.